In a prior video, I showed you how to get started with a tool called Stratus Red Team to simulate adversaries by executing attacks against your cloud environments. Grimoire is another open source tool that was created by the same person, Christoph Tefani de Reaper, and you can use it to generate data sets of cloud audit logs for common attacks. So what this means is we can use it with a tool like Stratus Red Team to execute attacks, and then it will inject a unique user agent containing a UUID so they can then pull those logs, those CloudTrail logs to retrieve the logs that were caused by our detonation and then it will stream those results right back into your terminal or into a file. And you can also use it directly with the AWS CLI with an interactive shell. And I'll show you both ways of using it in this video. So you can install Grimoire either directly with Go since it's built in Go, or you can use pre-built libraries as well from the releases page by clicking on this. Or in my case, since I'm on a Mac, I can also use this homebrew option. So that's what I did. But after all that, all you have to do is authenticate your AWS CLI and set a default region. If you're going to be using access keys, you can do AWS configure just like this. And then you can optionally set a profile, like for example, demo. Or if you're using the identity center, you can do SSO login or configure SSO. And then again, you can pass in your profile information. Now I've already done this, I'm already authenticated, so I'll skip that step. But because I am using a demo profile through identity center, what I will need to do for Stratus Red Team, which I'm going to be using today to work properly is export my AWS profile and set it equals to demo, since that's what I'm using. Also for Stratus Red Team to work properly, since it's using Terraform under the hood, you do have to export your AWS region equal to whatever you're using. So in my case, obviously I'm using US East one, as it says here with my demo profile. And so I'll export US East one. If you don't do this, even if you're configuring that through the CLI, you will run into issues with Terraform running behind a Stratus Red Team. Now, of course, I keep mentioning Stratus Red Team. So if you wanna use it with that, you'll need to make sure that it's fully installed and fully functional before you move forward. And you can check that with dash dash help on the Stratus command. If you don't already have this installed or if it's not working right, then refer to my other video where I walk you through how to get started with Stratus Red Team. All right, so once you've installed it, using it is actually very easy. We can get started by making sure that it's properly installed by doing Grimoire help. And you should see this banner with our usage and available commands. I'm first going to use it with Stratus Red Team as I've been mentioning, and I'll do that by typing in Grimoire help Stratus Red Team and it will give us the help menu with all the information we need to get started with that. So we can see the usage is Grimoire and then Stratus Red Team and then our flags. And these are the available flags that we have starting with attack technique string, exclude events, et cetera, et cetera. We're not gonna be looking at all these. Please feel free to do that if you're interested, but all I'm going to need to do is execute an attack technique. To do that, all I have to do is type Grimoire and then Stratus Red Team. Then this is a little bit different than what we saw in the prior video. We'll do dash O temp slash logs. And what this will do is it will tell Grimoire where to output the log files from CloudTrail. So if we want to output it into log files, this is how we do that. Later on, I'll show you how to input it or excuse me, output it directly into your terminal instead. But then all I have to do is pass in attack technique, AWS dot whatever you want. So there's a bunch of them. What we're gonna to use today doesn't really matter, but I'll just do I am create backdoor role. Again, you can use something totally different. We don't really care about the attack technique itself today because what we care about is the logs that get generated. So let me go ahead and submit this and let's see what happens. So we can see that it's warming up the attack technique. It's then detonating it. It successfully detonated and now it's searching for CloudTrail events. So what I probably should have done too is opened up a separate tab and then use tail in order to be able to view those temporary logs. So right now we don't have anything going on and we'll need to wait. The reason we need to wait is because CloudTrail is not real time, meaning that it could take up to many minutes, like 10, 15 minutes, potentially even longer than that, 
But in my experience, it's usually somewhere between five to 10 minutes, sometimes even less than that. But it's definitely not going to be real time. Also keep in mind that it is cleaning up Stratus Red Team Detonation in the background. So after it's executed it, you don't have to go through and necessarily do that yourself. It's uh, while it's searching for the Cloud Trail events, it's already doing that for you. So we can keep checking in in our temp logs and we can wait for that to start appearing. I'll fast forward so you're not just sitting here waiting with me, but uh, probably about two minutes or so, I'll be right back. Okay, so yeah, roughly about two minutes in, we get all this information back. As we can see, there's two distinct events that we're interested in. Now, because Grimoire is adding a UUID to our API calls, it's not flooding you with a bunch of different CloudTrail events, even if there's other activity going on in this account, which there would be, right? Every API call for the most part is going to be logged. So instead of being flooded with all that stuff, we just see our attack events that matter. Starting with here, we have attach role policy. And actually that's going to be the second one because the first one would be create role, right? This attack is going to create a role and then it's going to try and backdoor it and it's going to attach a role policy. We can view a lot of information about this call. Not only do we get the event name, but we can also see the region, which is going to be US East one, right? Since that's what we configured. We can see the request parameters with an assume role policy document. So if an attacker is actually doing this in our environment, we can see exactly what they passed in. Now, in this case, we have a permission boundary for AWS deny all. And you know the author of this tool did that on purpose so that there's just no way that this can actually be exploited. Although I'm pretty sure this is a fictitious account ID anyway. So it shouldn't be an issue, but they're being overly cautious, which is appreciated. This is going to be the role name that was created in your account. And then there's just other information that you can see here, the source IP address. Uh, let's see what else do we have that might be interested or interesting. We have the access key ID, account ID, ARN. So in this case, we can see that I'm using an assumed role with administrator access and user Christoph or username Christoph. So that's the create role. Then above that, we have the attach role call. So with this, we can see that we or the attacker attached the administrator access role to our role name. Again, there's the IP address and so on and so forth. So this is what the attack executed, right? Depending on the technique you're using, you may get more events than that. This is a very basic attack technique. So there's only two different events, but we get a lot of information. And of course, uh, we are getting this from CloudTrail into this file, but if we're using a seam or something like that, then we could also correlate that with what we see in our seam, make sure it's properly seeing everything and use that for some sort of threat detection if we want to create alerts and so on. So, okay, that's going to be our first attack technique. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this for now. We'll get back to it probably in just a minute. And then I will also point out here that as it found those events, it will list them out in here. But let's go ahead and exit out of this, which I'll do uh, with Control C. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna show you how to execute a similar thing. But in this case, I'm going to use the AWS CLI instead of using Stratus Red Team. But in order to use it with the AWS CLI, all we have to do is type Grimoire, and then we can do shell. And this time I won't output it to the file, I'll just output it back to our terminal, which you can do with dash O and then space dash. So let's go ahead and press enter. It'll spin this back up and it will give us instructions here. Feel free to read through that. And then we just need to press enter to continue. Now, when you do that, it looks like it actually exits Grimoire, right? It looks like it didn't work properly necessarily, but what it's going to do is it's going to monitor the commands that you're passing in, and then it's going to use those to execute them through the CLI, of course. And then it's going to add a, a, a UUID to those API calls that will do the same thing that we were able to do earlier. So enough talking about it, let's actually do it. First and foremost, of course, we'll do AWS get caller identity. And I'll just go ahead and press enter. So we can see I have my assumed role, right? Nothing special. We could do AWS S3 LS, or we could do anything else that we wanted to, right? We're, we're enumerating here. We're acting like a threat actor that just got access to credentials and is enumerating. So we could also do describe instances, for example, uh, the choice is yours, right? You could do whatever you have authorization to do through your role or through the user that you're authenticated as. Once you've executed these commands, all you have to do is press or enter exit and press enter. 
and it'll say welcome back to Grimoire, and now we're searching for CloudTrail events again. But in this case, I'm not outputting them to that temp log file, I'm just going to output them directly in my same tab here. So again, I'll be back in a couple of minutes with our results. And we're back. This time was even faster, probably not even a minute. So let's scroll up and let's see what's going on here. Uh, right now, I only have the EC2 describe instances event. The other ones are probably going to show up a little bit later. That's fine. Uh, but what we can see here is the same information, basically, but again, not within the file, within our terminal. So here we have describe instances for the event source of EC2, et cetera, IP address. And then we can see the user agent, AWS CLI, right? It's running through our CLI commands. So same thing there. Uh, and as we're talking about that now, the other one came in, the get caller identity. So sometimes they also come in out of order. That's just kind of how it works with CloudTrail if you're used to working with that. So same thing, uh, another one, S3 list buckets and so on and so forth. Yet another way that you can do it is by running scripts. So we could do vim temp or temp script.sh. And then within this, I can pass in my commands. As you can see, I've already got the file created. We're just gonna do STS get caller identity just to keep it simple, but you can do whatever else you want in here. And then all I have to do is pass, pass in that script, that shell script into my shell. So we'll do shell dash dash script and then temp script.sh. Let's go ahead and submit that. And it looks like I've got, I don't know, I've got some aliases here that I don't know why they're being output here. They might uh, be misconfigured. I'll have to look at that afterwards, but ignore this. This is not supposed to be part of it. It doesn't matter. It will instead run the detonation script. And then we can see what that detonation script is within our terminal. And then we are waiting for the CloudTrail events. And as you can see, it found it right away. Uh, actually, I wonder if it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it would have found this one and not the prior one. It just seems like it happened really, really fast. So, uh, but you get the idea. You can run it either through a script, you can run it through manual commands, or you can run it through Stratus Red Team. And by the way, all this is mentioned in the GitHub documentation for this tool. I'm not sharing anything that you can't find on this page here. So you can reference it for more information and also for more advanced usage. But this tutorial was meant to help you get started and hopefully help you see the benefit that this has with, uh, with detection engineering, threat detection, incident response, et cetera. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, play around with it, have some fun with it, see what you can do, see what works and what doesn't work. And also, I wanted to mention that I'm hosting a workshop with Christoph, the author of this tool. So if you'd like to join, you can RSVP on this page here. But even if you're watching this after the fact, we will make it available for replay at the same URL and potentially also here on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe, check it out, and be sure to register as well. But anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.